Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere. And there's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Also below this video, you can get £50 for swapping your UK electricity supplier to Octopus Energy. And this is a particular note if you drive an electric vehicle. Speaking of patrons, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of you who do support me on Patreon. So a massive shout out of thanks and appreciation to uh, Rob H., Ben White, Maximum Gravy, Austin Witsit, John Kays, Tommy Swagnitz, Michael Kahn, Patrick Gunnels, Banter, Will Brax, Mel B. Styles, Troy Shuker, Bose Nail, Sampson, Maris, Harry Blade, Mobile Max 777, Neo The One, Rob W, Open Minded, Reese Pound, Del West Watson, Mike, Dick Earth Skeptic, Maria Neelands, Unbelievable Productions, Blue Ridge Ranger, The Real Gabster, Liam Nedrick Jr., Abraham Mohammed, Adrian Quintana, Skeptic936, Life is Short, The Flat Earth Channel.com, Texas Mike, and David Wayne Foster. So, another massive thank you to all of you for supporting me on Patreon. Now, I will hand over to whoever is in Discord and Google so you can enjoy their dulcet tones while I set up for today's live show. <laughs> Yeah. Hello. Hey Neil. Can you hear us, Neil? Hello. I can hear you now. Some top quality audio you've got going on there, Neil. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, I'm, out, I, <laughs> I, I, I'm outside. A bunch of noise going on. Going in, though. No. I'm glad you told us. Problem is, I have no freaking internet upstairs. Of course, because contextually we all know exactly where you are and what upstairs is and why it wouldn't have internet. 27th floor in Manhattan, 48th and 7th Avenue. You would think I'm I'm higher to the satellite, right? So I should get better reception? Higher than a satellite up a high rise? I don't think so. Not I'm even in air rhetoric. To. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're saying you're higher up, so you're closer to what they claim to be the satellite. Yeah, it's done with ground transmission towers, though. That sucks. So you guys could hear all the noise going on in the background, even though I got my headphones in. The mic tucked away. Yeah, yeah, we can. <laughs> yeah, we we definitely hear it, but it's okay. Don't don't make that the main focus of your attention. Hey, tenth. No, didn't hear you. You came off mute. No words. Try again. Good morning. Good morning. Very good morning. Good morning to you too. I got a BLMS B69 alert last night. Oh, Bo put out a new video, did he? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mitchell's uh, has commented on it already in ch in our chat room and. Uh, the Anacapa Islands. This, okay. This go around. Cool. That's pretty. I, I had no it's idea. Pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, 
sure it's okay to play it. Want me to post it again? Uh, yeah, stick it in one of the Skype chats. I'm not going to be able to do anything at the moment in terms of playing things like that or looking at them on the fly for, for certain. All right. All right. Let me see what I can do. About managed to hustle people off mute in Discord. I'll do that now. Shockingly, everyone's off mute already. You chatty bunch. Hey, Nathan, how are you? I'm good, Rams. How are you? Good, thank you. Hey, Nathan, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Well, isn't this nice? Well, that was a pretty good. That was that was a pretty good talk you had yesterday. <clears throat> I think so. it's so hard for people to see, right? I can't even remember what we were talking about yesterday, Steve. I'm really sorry. <clears throat> well, just you know, basically. Oh gosh, how do you, cognitive dissonance, I think, was kind of what we were talking about. How people, the ballers, we're always talking about it actually. <clears throat> how to see the picture with these people that come in here repeating <laughs> nonsense. Oh, I, yes, I do vaguely remember now. I mean, fr from the back of that conversation, I'd say. I used to think that they were hyper intelligent to be able to change their story on the fly. And it's not at all. It's just they've got two different versions of events floating around their head at the same time that are in contradiction to one another. And the fact that they jump between them is a display of their cognitive pain as opposed to their intelligence. Oh, the pain. That's why it's okay. so quiet. It's a mastery. Okay, I'll I'll have to check it later. It's a, it's just a picture. Uh, it's not the video. It's a picture with a heading on it. It pretty much says it all. So new radius, one point seven seven million miles. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. That's not, that's not good, though. Horizon distance, 31.82 miles. Wow. Anacapa Arch and Rock, 85 feet elevation, 31.82 miles away. So that's this, right? So, yeah. It's not exactly... Oh, get, get off. Go away, Arrow. That's nuts. <laughs> I, I was just going to bed when I got it, and I looked at it, and I said, wow. And then uh, Mitchell put, I guess, this. someone put the slide together here and yeah, found it this morning. About all the celestial bodies, they don't matter anymore? Derived from this is just a black swan. I mean, I don't want to say just a black swan. It's one hell of a black swan, right? Yeah. Neil, to your question, the answer is sticks and shadows. Very good. Okay, thank you for sharing that. I'm glad I brought it up. Yeah, yeah. No, there'll be more on it, I'm sure. It just came out, so it's just another beautiful, wonderful black swan. Yeah, I mean, sticks and shadows really is simple. It's the sun at a lower angle to you and uh, casting a longer shadow. 
over a flat plane. I don't see the I don't see how they got anything with sticks and shadows. Unless they want to pre-assume the earth is curved and sun is infinite distance away and rays come in parallel, which can't be seen because they come in divergent. But who am I to argue with the model? They got some guy with a sextant in the middle of the earth. <laughs> And comical. Got to keep banging that drum, you know, how they hijack the actual angle measurement taken with your feet being the vertices or the point that the two straight lines meet to give you an angle in the first instance, one of them being a flat straight baseline, and how their angle measurement comes from the centre of a presupposed spherical earth, ergo you can't actually take their measurement. Or show us how they do it. You can't. It they do show us how they do it. They do it on the deck of a sailboat with a sextant and minus dip to get to the level of the water. I know, how they That's do it on a sphere. That's not going to with the Earth. No, they don't, Neil. They don't. I know they don't. Why are you asking, then? <laughs> if they're, if they're going to say they're doing it from the centre of the Earth, then show us. But yeah, they they don't need half of that. No, they can't. You can't say that an angle that you're actually... If you're holding a sextant, pointing it at the horizon with the horizon mirror and pointing it at the celestial object with the index mirror, you are actually making that angle measurement there and then on the ground, on surface level, and the geometry relies on you having a flat baseline to the GP of the star. It is just that simple. Now, them saying, oh, no, well, actually, on paper, if I put it in Muppet vision and say that the angle's coming from the centre, it isn't coming from the centre, it's coming from your hand. I agree, and that's what I'm saying. If you're going to say this is how we do it on paper, then you better get your ass to the center of the Earth. No, they they don't have to. They can just presuppose there is... A, no. Let me finish. They can presuppose, and presuppose sun rays, uh, 2022 is coming, uh, are coming in parallel. So whatever is done at the surface can also be involved at the center because you will have a transversal. It's going to be a corresponding angle. See, they just have to presuppose it. Oh, no, no more presupposing. That's oh, it. Too bad. Don't forget, the, well, <laughs> don't forget the infinite distance to the stars presupposition. Yeah, that's that's uh, when I say the sun at an infinite distance to stars as well. So everything so far away that light's coming in parallel, except we have well, let's see, angles and shadows cast on buildings or from buildings and any uh, walls. And you say, wow, it's late in the afternoon. Look at that shadow the wall is casting. Oh, no, that's because the earth is curved. Well, you can look at it that way if you want, uh, but you're going to need R for that. But that's not what's happening. The sextant proves it. Yeah, just got to keep banging this drum. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to send the picture to Master B. It's a, I mean, it's one of their own, but it's so good. You just got to see it every day. Okay, it's coming your way. And the same people who, who tell you all this garbage are the same people who put, put out slides like this. It's up there. Maybe yeah, I've got it. How does this work? How does this work with the center of the air crap? Oh, it's a nonsense, isn't it? This is done. This is an example of somebody holding those two positions simultaneously. And they've got to square the circle. So this is how they square the circle, the left hand image. Mm hmm. Yeah, pretty sad. I'll tell you what's pretty sad. I'm out for a cup of coffee. It tasted so good, I went for another one. And just as I'm drinking it, of course, the boss comes. And? Are you saying those are grounds for dismissal? No, it's just I like to be working when they pop up. But, you know, he didn't say nothing. And I'm coffee. having coffee. I'm the only one to get that, bro. I heard that. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother.
Maybe he's percolating what he saw. <laughs> no, I'm a quick thinker, so I'm like, yeah, there's a flood. 29th floor is flooded. Multiple units just defer right away. So he's off me drinking coffee and wondering where the water's coming from. He's probably all right. He's probably just a regular Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Not, a, not, not, not my level. Very good, Nathan. I tip my cup to you. And the better ones are the ones that slip most people by. You know, grounds for dismissal, that would slip yes. most people by. That's why I don't laugh. Because I, I, I want know. <laughs> <laughs> but I like, I like the silence and then later bring it on to even make it even worse. Because... Nothing worse than having to explain the pun, but there's nothing better than hearing someone explain the pun because it's really bad. <laughs> or it not getting through. That's the most frustrating thing because ultimately, when a when a good when a good pun comes to you, it's normally during some high moment of tension, and you want to get the pun in, but by this or oh, there's a lot of jokes going at the same time, and you want to get it in. But the same token, you don't want to spoil everyone else's fun. But if the time True. keeps ticking by, the timing is getting worse and worse and worse. How true is that? With the electricity, when we were talking about um, changing viscosities of liquids to show relative density, and then I was like, well, you know, obviously there's a lot of buzz around honey, but there was so much kerfuffle. You caught it. I don't (laughs) don't know if it made it out onto the show. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's really a fun thing to grasp it because... It's happening simultaneously to any discussion. And you, you know, when I first started doing this as a kid, it was like, no control. Just get out there. I have it. I'm going to do it. And, you know, as you mature as an adult and you're in these other conversations, they're not schoolyard conversations. They're, you know, it could be a serious subject, like someone's death even or something. And then because you're wired this way, Normal conversation on the right and puns on the left simultaneously going at the same time. It's like, I could say this, I could say this, I could say this, I could say this, but no, I shouldn't say this. So I'm at a funeral. <laughs> I'm not going to say this. <laughs> yeah, well, if you're at a funeral, was you'll fall Neil, on dead was ears. Neil the daily... Nice was one, Neil. Neil the Come on, grind. you interrupted my pun. No, sometimes you got to let him go. Sometimes you got to let him go, Neil. Go ahead, Rams. I was just saying, is that Neil on at the Daily Grind? <laughs> the newspaper, yeah. Both of you had a good one. Neil had a good one too. Falls on deaf, dead ears. Yes, dead ears. Uh. But I don't get the part. You can have to explain that one to me. Because I mentioned a flood, and you said, is that ground for dismissal? Coffee grounds. No, that was on your coffee. Coffee oh, grounds. Oh, oh, oh. That's right. I did say I'm at a coffee break. Okay, got it. <laughs> yeah, and then, and, well, I don't want to go into what Nathan did, but he he, he said you need to let it percolate for a while. <laughs> got that, but it's not a coffee ground. It's grinds. So I don't get it. Oh, oh God. It's not supposed to work perfectly. <laughs> the, the worse it works in many ways, the funnier it is. As long as you you got to put that kind of groan into your voice that that intonates, you know it's awful. Yes, I, it's a very loose <laughs> yeah. connection. That that's what makes Eminem a good rapper. Because the things that he rhymes are not supposed to rhyme. You no, know, he says it, he makes them rhyme, but it works. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Don't be cute, Nathan. So we don't we don't have any ballers right now in Discord. It's all flat earthers in Discord. Is, is, is that right? No one's chatting away or let's just go down the list. Endless. Are you a flat earther or a baller? Earth to endless. Come in endless. His role is a flat earther. If you roll to flat earth, it means you've you've qualified or justified yourself enough to be rechanged. Everyone enters this server as a baller. 
without exception. Okay. Harp. Yeah. Do a globe of harp. <laughs> I was just putting the cat out. I was just getting a cup of tea. Yeah, I can't even get them to respond. I know. What's going on? <laughs> Supposed to be the warm up for the live show. Everyone's disappeared. <laughs> Amazing. All right. Populating the Master B with four slides. I'm on my third. Okay. Got the first one. We'll have something, we'll have something to talk about. <laughs> the punts are over. <laughs> the involvement is over. So let's go to these slides. Okay. Got the first one up with HO, observed altitude. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, very simple, right angle, star. Uh, this is why we keep talking about this, or should I say harping on this since we got a harp in Discord. Uh, the stars that are used for navigation have a position over the Earth. Uh, it's called the GP, as you can see there, the ground position or the geographical position of that navigating star that is used by sailors and airmen. And... Uh, of course, you put a grid system, longitude, latitude on this flat plane of ours, and you're able to know where that star is uh, using the sextant when you sight it in, which will tell you where you are because you know where the star is uh, on the grid. So if you know the star's longitude, latitude, you can figure out yours. So as you can see here, uh, once the observed altitude and then the computed altitude uh, it's done. You figure out uh, from your assumed position, obviously, where you are. You're either closer to that uh, star or further away. But that line to the GP is a right angle, and that star to the ground to you is a right angle. So everything is done with straight lines, and this is why the Earth is flat. And next uh, slide will show two circle of equal altitudes, which is just that first slide played out from a above view, showing when you get two of them, where they cross, you're at one of those two crossings. So on this one, it's the upper one, obviously, because of your previous position. You're not that far south. You didn't travel that much the, the night before. So you, you know where you are. You're in that second uh, crossing up there. And so there's your fix. All those GPs and all those circle of equal altitude are right angles and they're flat. Next slide. This one we showed uh, a couple of days in a row, I think now, uh, other than the fact that they're trying to make the bottom seem curved, uh, which it's not because they got a 90 there. Uh, so nice trick here, but it's also true because you have the co-altitude, which is your zenith. So right now we're introducing your position to the star's position. So the star's position, the blue is the zenith of the star over the Earth directly. That's the GP. Then we've got the observer in the red with his or her position with the zenith above, both creating right angles. And when you shoot that star and you do the sighting, it says 60 degrees. Well, you minus 60 from 90. Why 90? Now, we're going to say 90 because 90 is important. Because when you minus it from 90, you get a 30 degree. And 30 degrees times 60 nautical miles is 1,800 nautical miles. You have your zenith distance. So you see, everything has to be flat for it to work. They need their 90. This is their slide. They're always referencing 90. But you can't if you live on a curved ball. But they do because that's what we live on, a flat plane. Next slide. So in reality, Muppet Vision View here, uh, the one to the right, horizontal, that's what we've just seen from their own slides. Uh, and But they want us to think it's this other thing to the left. But guess what? A sextant can't work on the curve. It's an angle measuring device. You need two straight lines forming a corner, a vertex, which is where you are, to get the angle. You're the sextant. 2021, the age of the sextant as well. Epic. Hope Brian joins today. Yeah. Hey, Arwen. Sorry, middle of the 
presentation when you joined. I've got a couple of buttons to press, so if you can chat amongst yourself for the next five minutes, that'd be really handy. That's great. I'm glad you're pressing buttons finally. <laughs> hey, Arwen. Neil, you're back on? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, Arvin's on mute. You're back on, and Nathan's pushing buttons. Discord, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah, did, you guys see, did you guys see those slides as I was doing it, or were you just hearing it? I'm just hearing it. Just hearing it. Yeah, but you can picture There's in your no, mind, no right? Way for us to say. You can picture in your mind through the description of right angles how it has to work. Yeah. So, just a real quick poll from everyone in Discord. Uh, I know there isn't a bunch of you yet this time until the show starts, but uh, the Sexton and its right angle measuring. Well, let's put it this way. The sextant can only m measure off of a straight baseline because it's an angle measuring uh, device. Uh, how has that affected your debates? Have you had any with ballers outside this show? Uh, I have, and, and they they do the, the same old trick that they do with the level and, and uh, uh, you know, and, and the curve, and basically they they turn it for theoreticals uh, for for the purposes of working the mathematics sake. They treat it as flat in in all, all sorts of weird double speak and weird tricky logic that they use, basically whoa, 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 to justify whoa. them treating it as as flat. Well, well, so you're saying a 3,000-mile radius to a GP of a star, they're going to admit is flat? Well, well, the, see, they're, they're treating it all as flat, but, but, on a, but then they're just imagining that it's on a ball. But, I mean, for convenience of doing the mathematics... The way that they want to do it, they they have to treat it, um, treat the curved surface as uh, as as being parallel with the sky, uh, just treat it as a, as a flat plane. Awesome. And for, so, for theoretical sake, they believe they can do that. So when Nathan says it only exists in the math and they pretty much agree with that, then it's not real, it's not reality, it's a mathematical thing. Yeah, they're essentially yes. fighting, in defense of their position towards the sextant, they're having to fight our argument for us and tell us that we will consider the, the geometric certitude of flat baselines, that would be flat earth lines to the GP, in order to do this, or make an angle measurement in the first place. However, after the fact, and after assuming it's flat, measuring it's flat, and triangulating with it's flat, 90 degree baseline to the GP you can then assume it's a sphere after the fact if you want to but that that would be us pulling apart their argument if we phrased it that way and that's how they phrase it in response yeah so the coronavirus uh, re response with intrinsic lines remember that one <laughs> yeah so if he's talking about chord he's saying well because there's a dissection of a curve for the straight line that is the chord line therefore the chord line that is straight has an intrinsic curve it's just a tricky way of double speaking its way around a problem yeah. the problem being no straight yeah. lines all right so yeah, the remaining... this only works straight lines yeah, yeah. they don't have any so Anyone else in Discord that's going to pipe up on that question? And I actually um, spoke to someone who was in the Navy, and his, his excuse was that they, they had to take uh, readings every, say, hour. I don't know how that explained it, but that's what his argument was. Um, that's true. They do take uh, – well, once you study how they do it, uh, they have 
a daily routine from the time uh, they wake up until the time the sun goes down, then it's up to the stars as long as you can see the horizon. So it can, like a, uh, a full moon will allow you to do it well at night, for example, because you can actually see the horizon. But what they do is they constantly are having to say, ha what's the current to the ocean? What's the wind? What's, what's it all doing to our boat? So every few hours they have to do it. And then they go to their plotting sheet and see if they veered off course or they're on course. So, yeah, that's true, but that doesn't answer the question. Uh, no, exactly. I, I'm in, in agreement with you, but that was sort of the way they were, where they explained how the tool works. In their mind, they believe because they take it every couple of hours, that means that it's flat, uh, it's spherical. Earth Debate Live. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support the channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live and there's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Also below this video, you can get £50 for swapping your UK electricity supplier to Octopus Energy, and this is a particular note if you drive an electric vehicle. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. One last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe. Hit the bell notification icon and join button to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by 10th Man, Arwin, Neil and a whole bunch of people in Discord. So welcome one and all. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good, morning. good to have you all. We only covered one housekeeping question yesterday, so I might leave it till last, just so it doesn't develop into a conversation that only revolves around the lack of physical geometric sphere edge for a horizon otherwise known as earth curve so any evidence of axial rotation of the earth-based variety you can need a, a radius for that and they don't have that no and that would that would produce a coriolis effect as well that we don't see so Indeed, there is no Coriolis deflection to observe, and their claim is that we observe Coriolis deflection because we're on a non-inertial turning reference frame, a.k.a. a spinning Earth. Yeah, but at the same time, they backtrack from that statement when they need to. Have you noticed that? What, when we show that there is no deflection, we're not on a spinning Earth, and the effects yes. that would be induced by us being on a spinning Earth aren't observed to anybody ever then they say oh we wouldn't expect to see that effect we claimed we'd see to prove we spin yeah yeah anti-flat earthers will then go against their own rhetoric and tell us that we wouldn't expect to see the deflection at 15 degrees an hour that is claimed to be induced by an earth that's spinning we wouldn't expect to see that and then they'll tell us as flat earthers why would you expect to see something that the globe earth claims to be proving we spin 
when we don't see it. Well, because you say we should on a globe Earth. No, we don't, says the anti-flat earther. And so it goes on. Yeah, then they'll say, yeah, but it's in the army manuals and it's 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 been written down in books books that it does exist. They say, well, good, then show it to us. Well, we can't show it to you, but it does exist. <laughs> Any evidence of the distance to the sun? No, you're still going to need R for that, for that distance measurement, because uh, they're all related to one another. The center of this mass and the center of that mass are in their in their world. That would be very and... difficult to do. Yeah, you're not kidding. Well, you got to have an R to do it to begin with. So, yeah, it's difficult to do. They can't even do it on the one we're on. Shout out to Julio Pabon. He says no to all housekeeping questions, just in case we don't get through all of them. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> <laughs> really appreciate the support. Any evidence of a self-perpetuating molten iron core at the centre of a presupposed spherical Earth? Yeah, my no, favourite so one. Absolutely not. Iron was telling us that that started to boil as a subject matter. Well, very yeah. nice. Why yeah, somebody came why in just the other day going on about the P waves and S waves. Why is this your favourite one? Who's that to? Because it's the most ridiculous. It's it's a, a presupposition sandwich <laughs> to begin with. These arguments are cyclica, cyclical, so they come around and around. I think after about the third time around, QE started to highlight that fact. In other words, you pummel something like the molten iron core into the incoherent oblivion it belongs and they'll just come back six months later after you've stopped mentioning it and those videos have stopped being recommended. I say, like, we're going to have our videos recommended for a six-month period. <laughs> I jest. <laughs> I'm lucky if my videos get prevalence for six hours. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, back in the day, I remember typing in certain words and all the relevant good channels would show up. Now, it's not the same. Yeah, what we discussed the other day about how televisions were replaced by the social media and, you know, what is the information is less important to how the information is controlled and the flow of that information. You know, so long as you've got enough people producing information, you can designate which parts of that information you want to reach an audience and which you don't and you know in terms of which pipe metaphorically we've been funneled down in this instance you know we reach a nice little dead end <laughs> never to be siphoned into many more houses that's just one of those things isn't it you know it means that as a youtuber i've got to work extra 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 hard and i'd like to think i'm a as YouTubers go, a very hard-working YouTuber. Um, but that's just that's the way life is, isn't it? You know, which would I prefer? Would I prefer to be in the position that Flat Earth was in in 2015 and 2016 and maybe a little bit of 2017, which is to say that you typed in Flat Earth, if you typed in Flat Earth to base, you would find me. Right now, <laughs> you've got absolutely zero chance of finding me. Anything with Flat Earth in the, t in the title or tags will just immediately be censored straight to the bottom of the list and what you'll be presented with is all the mainstream stuff including my interview with vice that comes up high on the list which isn't a bad interview nothing in there particularly that i would say i would want to change other than people taking a snapshot of me rolling my, my eyes while i try and say sphericity anyway other than that you know it's reasonable but it's it's not it's not mine by any stretch of the imagination you know it's still got their theremin in the background Ooh. While I'm talking about whatever, not knowing what the sun is, I think. 
But in any event, you know, that's what you'll find at the top of the list as opposed to anything that you search in. So if you're an anti-flat earther at the moment, you get this sort of false sense of pride in terms of the work that you'll do because it is far more prevalent if you do a search for the subject. So if you've had a tertiary interest in this subject and you type it into Google or YouTube, then, you know, you'll get presented with, at very high up the list at least, um, your anti-flat earther. Well, you know, good for you. But now I've prefaced what the alternative is, would I rather be on the alternative side just because it's more profitable? Well, from the profitable position, yeah, I'd rather be more profitable. Who wouldn't want to be? But would I sacrifice my own morals and lie? No, I, I couldn't do that. And do I have to, therefore, suffer the consequences of knowing that, yeah, having that privilege of saying, yeah, I'm done heart, I don't lose any sleep over this, I don't feel like I'm deceiving anybody in any way, shape or form, even when I e-beg for whatever piece of equipment broken or my projector, which is out for repair literally as we speak, things like that. Do I feel guilty about that? No, not in the slightest. Would it be easier if I was on the anti-flat earth side? Oh, absolutely. The shows would get a lot more views, therefore I'd get a lot more ad revenue, potentially a bigger audience, potentially more super chats, potentially more PayPals. You know, life would be more comfortable. But is that worth it to literally give up your sanity for? Because that's what I'd think I'd have to give up. And I watch the people around me on my anti-flat earth counterpart side of the argument doing exactly that. So it's like, yeah, they might earn a bit more money. They're better off. They're less poor than I am. But is it worth it? You know, there's more to life than money. By the way, smash the super chat. (laughs) Yeah, smash the super chat. It's really true for so many people, I think. Money really is everything to, to a lot of people that I know in my in my generation at least and and around there the younger ones as well just they'll do anything for money that they, they really will the shout out to god yeah. says reportedly nathan has a strange or weird body shape currently it's the number one globe proof <laughs> i don't really know what that's all about a few people have been calling me fat I'm like, I haven't really changed shape very much. If anything, I've lost weight since COVID. <laughs> People are calling me fat. I think they're just trying to pull at various threads to see which one bugs me. <laughs> You're like, okay, whatever. <laughs> Keep tugging at that string if you like. All you ever see is your head. I was, I was going to suggest that you move the camera away a little bit so we can see a little bit more in your big head. Move it away so you can see more than just my head. You can see my shoulders. What do you want? Well, that's a little weird. About. I'll ask my about wife. Your big fat Been a while since I set this up. I'll get my wife to assess it. I'll say, there you go. Here's my camera angle. Does this make me look fat? Because <laughs> I really care. <laughs> what nonsense. As I say, Fundy's just trying to pull at some threads that might give them some joy or some pain relief. In other words, if they can project some pain onto me in any way, shape or form, that will make them temporarily, literally for a few moments, feel better about themselves. Adam? Afternoon, guys. Hello. Good, Good morning, morning, everyone. Any well, evidence? Nathan, on that note, on that note, that could be said about anybody. Look at the, there's uh, the Amish community pretty much states to themselves. They don't want the pollution uh, as they deem the world dishes out. Uh, and they could go out of that and chase money, but they don't. Uh, there's people with high morals that won't sell drugs or do anything that can hurt another human being, and they can make more money if they do, uh, but they won't do that. So then when you bring it down to the ballers and the question on the table for them is, are you going to keep pushing a lie or are you going to navigate a uh, towards the truth and hold the position where the truth is. Uh, and, and this is what we're saying, is they rather be part of the deception and, oh, there's money to be made by having channels against Flat Earth? Well, I'll do that. Can I add that money is an illusion just like the globe? Yeah. But by the same token, you do have to actually pay for things. So, you know, I've... Some people try and beat around that bush in the truth community, like it's somehow wrong to want to make a living. So I just try and negate that by saying, well, I'm a YouTuber. That's that's my first standpoint. 
So I then get compared, or that's what I hope <laughs> doesn't happen, but I hope that I'm then compared on a level playing field with everyone else who's trying to make a living from producing videography and publishing it to YouTube, as opposed to, well, by my standards in the community of truth, you shouldn't, for example, put your information behind a paywall. All right, why not? Well, because it's the truth. Completely agree with well, okay, I completely sorry. agree with you on that, but obviously on the um, a bit of paper, it says... Ten pounds. Ten pounds of what? So when everyone believes they live in a globe, just because they live in that globe, they're not living on that globe. So you, what have you got ten pounds of? Yeah, sure. I mean, I could. We could get into the discussion of fiat currency, and if you're unaware, look it up and do your own research into terms of what what money really is and what it really means. <laughs> Very little. Um, you're right. This isn't that show, though. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hey Nathan, uh, I, I got a, a question. I, I will make a note of it though. <laughs> boom boom. Yeah, we occasionally mention your straw man coat that you have to put on for various different things. So, you know, if people don't pick up what we put in down subtly in that regard, I'm not going to explain the the in terminology, the jargon that we use because it's kept as jargon intentionally. You know, it uh, this subject to me is more important. There's plenty of people out there that know about what currency is and isn't and in many ways that that isn't in any way suppressed it's kind of common knowledge i'm sure there's probably some aspects of it that's all in schools um but i just don't see that as such a such a big deception as the very nature of your existence if you if you went off grid having been indoctrinated in a western world education you'd still go off grid thinking you were on a sphere and looking up at the moon thinking that men had traveled through it and such so you know, I just see it as a much, much bigger de deception than than things like the the money that we use, which is, I agree with you, it's just a kind of nonsensical thing. Um, but I still do have to fix my projector because it's a nightmare running the show without it. Anyway, I had someone telling me we live on a spinning water ball in a vacuum because when you swing a bucket around your head, the water stays in the bucket, says Ben White from the Super Chat. Yeah. I, I don't have that story. I know that it's a similar story to chocolates, but mine was sort of gravity got explained to me. Then I went home and did that of my own volition in the back garden. I remember swinging it around my head thinking, but it's on the outside. <laughs> you know, this doesn't make any sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Any I'm chocolate? holding the handle of the bucket. <laughs> well, well, actually, let's pause for a minute because that is a point that I try to make with people I talk with. A, a little parlor trick, just a, a bucket with water with a handle, you spin it, and this is supposed to be eye for eye, tooth for tooth, equal with the globe with water on the sphere spinning on these crazy rotations and the water sticking to the... Uh, where is it? I mean, it's not, it doesn't even jive. It's not even comparable, is it? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> it's nonsense. But here's the point. The masses fall for it because the masses are sheep and they want to be told. Speaking of masses, any scientific evidence of gravity? In the math? I'll try that Not again. Scientific. Any scientific evidence of gravity? Good point. Nothing. No, no scientific. Hasn't been through the method. They keep changing it. It's being changed as we speak. No, not even a definition for the phenomenon to begin with. I like it when people like yourself say things like that, Rams, because it means that if QE was on the panel now and he answered that question with gravity, what's gravity? That would often go over most of the audience's head back in the day when he started saying it. You know, especially uh, in debate, if he was here and he'd say that and someone brought it up, what's gravity? You know, he might preface the question thereafter and say, well, which one? You know, to try and lead them a bit. But when someone like yourself, Ram, says, well, there is no phenomena. You know, what are we observing occur for us to try and acquire the cause of it with scientific experimentation? What are we observing happen again? Yeah, there isn't anything. There's no phenomena to study. 
So if you've got no phenomena and the asserted 106 year, nearly 107 year out of date mass attracting mass is violated by gas in terms of gas behaviour, then what have you got left? Mathematics. That's not science. Bending pseudo fourth dimensional space time. <laughs> I don't think so. Not in my world. Not in anybody's world. Pseudo Romanian four space. The clues in the tile. Not real. It's pseudo. Pseudo geometry for a pseudo four space time bending, and that's their explanation. And you're like, for what? That doesn't give you mass attracting mass. It doesn't give you moon pulling on Earth's tides. It doesn't give you men sticking to a ball that's spinning. It doesn't give you anything. Just maths. It's because they're starting at a point where they're on a ball spinning. And for that to happen, there must be some sort of sport force to keep everything from dispersing and so it, they're working backwards from that assumption yep it's a band-aid for a reification that's failed any single viable hypothesis from any of the fields of astronomy cosmology or astrophysics Sort of a trick question, isn't it? Because <laughs> it's not possible. Uh, or no, is it? It is. It is possible. The reason it wasn't any scientific evidence from any of the fields of astronomy, cosmology, or astrophysics is because they've got phenomena coming out of their eyeballs, right? They've got so much phenomena that can easily... They'd have to validate it. Just a viable hypothesis. That would be, you're all studying this phenomena, right? this occurrence, this thing happening, right? That's definitely a phenomenon then, dependent variable. Okay, now just give us your presumed cause of it as you observe it as an effect. I, if this, then that. That's all you've got to do. It doesn't even have to be Don't viable. Don't you need to identify the answer to the what is question bef before you can go into cause and effect of what that, that what is is doing? That's not my problem. If you, <laughs> what is that phenomena we're studying? It's a bit like, you know, when you come to describe things with natural law. Well, you can you can be beautifully eloquent in your description of the thing that's occurring, and pretty much that's what they do, but turn it into an explanation. Like they're just so sure about what's occurring, and then an ascribed cause, we'll say gravity in this example, is somehow the cause of a phenomena that they don't even know how it or why or what it is in the first instance. But in this instance, all we're asking for is a viable hypothesis. That is to say, you can tell us what the phenomena is. That's fine. You've got plenty of those. Now just give us science for it in the form of a viable hypothesis. Not validated, viable. That would be if something you assume causes the thing you've studied, then it will cause that effect and the null. If the thing I think will cause the effect I'm studying, then no effect. That's all they've got to do. It should be easy. But isn't it one of those things that it's impossible to manipulate? No, no I'm not asking. They've got to satisfy the criteria for an independent variable in the first instance. Oh, okay, I'll pepper it because you're, you're pushing me to. That's fine. Well, what is an independent variable? Well, it's got to be real. Yeah, it's got to be your presumed cause of the effect. And it's got to be capable of being varied and manipulated by the researcher. Now, if you satisfy all three criteria, then it's a viable independent variable. Now, does that mean that I'm saying they must take that which they assume to cause the effect and vary it in experimental uh, controlled circumstances to, via, uh, to validate it or invalidate it? No, they just have to uh, suppose a presumed cause of an effect they're studying. And then put it into hypothesis format. If A, then B. And if A, not B. Alternative and null. A being the thing they think will cause uh, the gotcha. effect, which must be real, their presumed cause of the effect, and capable of being varied. That's it. Yeah. Cool. Gotcha. This should be easy, Rams. You're like, oh, it shouldn't, it's not possible. Like, 
trick question. No, not all. It should be really easy for the whole body of science, right? That's what they claim to be. So the whole body of science has no viable hypotheses. That's the conclusion. Well, the whole body of science could be located in one place, Corpus Christi, Texas. Uh, we'll get to that. Or should we cover that now? Any evidence of physical geometric sphere edge horizon, formerly known as the curve of the Earth? Black Swan. On screen for your, or for my audience's pleasure, Beau, otherwise known as BLMSB69 YouTuber, check his channel out, subscribe today. This is Corpus, is it Corpus Christi? Was it, how'd you say it? No, no, I was making a pun about corpse. Corpus oh, Christi. I was say, Anna Kappa, <laughs> Arch and Rock. <laughs> <laughs> it threw me completely then. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay, so on the left, you can see the image that's been taken at 31.82 miles distance at an 85 feet elevation. And you can see a more detailed close-up shot of what's being referenced. Put in the horizon in excess of the geometric limitation of an Earth sphere radius 3959. Earth's not a sphere. The horizon's not Earth curve. We don't live on a sphere. It's just that simple. Yeah, that needs changing. I've just emailed Mitchell. He asked me to do the maps yesterday, but he said a one and a half foot observer height, so I need to redo the maps. Because it's saying on this, like, 85 foot. I'm going to shrink the radius a fair bit. Yeah, fair enough. There's been some mathematical errors before we've even well, got started. Go on, go on to the next one, Nate. I don't know if Mitchell's done it himself, because um, he's he's amended the, the number... Um, but I've just, it's, it's the one that's got 700,000 R, um, which is a lot more reasonable, isn't it, from 85 foot? Um, was the, was the 85 foot the height of the rock? I don't know. That, this is what I'm not sure. So this is what I want to ask him, because the, the numbers he sent me was one and a half foot elevation. So I did the maths on one and a half off the ground and 30. Yeah. Mark. I saw the video that BLMSB did. He was one and a half foot. He put it on his own video. So his shot of it is from one and a half foot. So that 85 has to refer to that rock cropping being well, 85 then. feet. Yeah, that's fine then. I don't know. Yeah, it must mean 85 foot high elevation is the rock as opposed to, yeah, the observer height. Cool, well, that's fine then. The maps is right. I'll take it all yeah. back. Okay, fine. I'll just do a couple of quick shout outs. Al Junkie says... Gems inside my ear. No, they don't live on a lobe. Okay, thank you very much for the super chat. Really appreciate the support. Also, Godzilla. If you spin a gas a giant, in quotes, on a rope in the middle of the near-perfect vacuum. What near-perfect vacuum? Sorry, I won't. I'll start that again because I'm interjecting in your super chat, Godzilla. Let's try that again. If you spin a, quote, gas giant, end quote, on a rope in the middle of a near perfect vacuum and you can still see Saturn at night, then debate over Globy Logic. <laughs> okay, thank you very much indeed for the super chat. That's a, that's a great play on the bucket. <laughs> oh, there's another super chat come through just before I go to the next housekeeping question. So Justice Bernal, have I said that correctly? Hopefully so. Anyone seen BLMS B69 new black swan video? Can you provide a simple explanation? Uh, yeah, yeah, we I have got Modus Tollens. Maybe that's referred to the Globers, as in, can the Globers explain away this? Yeah, they can say refraction. And upon doing so, they invalidate the geometry of an Earth sphere because you can no longer acquire the radius by way of a dip angle measurement to that geometric limitation formerly known as Earth curve. So the rebuttal would be refraction, and that annihilates their own globe faith. Thank you very much indeed for the Super Chat Justice. Which housekeeping questions haven't we had? Well, you started with uh, saving R for last, so the... 
No, I was intending to save the physical geometric sphere edge, I'm formerly sorry. known yeah, as edge curvature. Right. But then there was a little bit of a blip in between as we didn't know if there was a 1.5 feet observer height or an 85 feet elevation, as noted. But there we go. So it seems like it's all good now. Uh, any evidence of the R value, Earth radius? Well, you're going to need the R for that. You can't presuppose all these things like they do. They Black can't calculate picture. it without presupposing it. Yeah, calculations exist in the math, that's fine. But if you're going to say it's the reality we live on, then the, the black swan could never exist. Well, according to an avionics tech in the in the military, uh, she says even if you're 70,000 feet in the air and you can see maybe 360 miles out, the curve isn't a thing yet with binoculars or not. Sorry, yeah, when they say things like that, they're talking about the horizon though, right? She? Yes. The horizon's right. not Earth curve. We've debunked that. So if they're going to say, oh, if you go up really high, you won't see the horizon bending as Earth curve yet. So you're not high enough. The horizon's not Earth curve. What do you mean you're never right. going to see it? We'll see the horizon at a high altitude. It just isn't Earth curve. We've debunked it. This was something that Righteous Force had the penny drop about a month ago. I was like, yeah, Black Swan. He was like, hold on. Does the Black Swan apply to the horizon at high altitude? I'm like, it's just the horizon. It doesn't matter where at what height they say it's Earth curve. It doesn't matter if they say you won't see it bending at high altitude in this case. See what bending? The horizon? That's not Earth curve, love. They're not getting it. We need to put out a paper or something. Yeah. If the Earth was a sphere with a radius of 3959 miles, then every distance to horizon could be no more than 1.2 times the square root of the observer's height in feet. What's that assertion? Well, it's the assertion of Earth curve, a la the Earth curve mathematics based on R. And where have you got the R from? Well, by measuring the dip angle to the physical geometric sphere edge horizon that's claimed to be falling away from your position 8 inches per mile squared and a limitation to your view that obscures things in the distance. That's your Earth curve horizon, and every distance to it can be no more than 1.2 times the square root of the observer's height feet. That's your Earth curve geometry. Now, the moment we show, and we do, that it's beyond the limitations of a sphere Earth radius 3959, then the horizon is not Earth curve. It's beyond the geometric limitations. You can't just refract it. It's a geometric assertion, a physical limitation to your view. Now, if you refract it in response to the black swan argument, modus tollens, I'll repeat it. If Earth was a sphere radius 3959, then every distance to horizon could be no more than 1.2 times the square root of the observer's height in feet. And the black swan shows the horizon beyond the geometric limitations of a sphere radius 3959. Therefore, the horizon is not Earth curve and the Earth is not a sphere. If your response is, well, refraction, well, then you can no longer derive the geometry because it can't be acquired if the horizon is refracted. It's no longer geometric and can no longer be utilised to acquire a geometric value of R. That would be Earth radius. So it debunks their own assertion in the first instance because they can no longer measure Earth as a sphere because they're saying we don't have the geometry, we don't see the geometry, it's refracted. So therefore you can't see the geometry, we don't have the geometry, it can't be measured. That would be Earth curve, cannot be seen, doesn't exist beyond the maths and cannot be measured. We can't see or measure Earth curve is their response. Refraction, all right, game over globe. You need to be able to measure the R value to refract it in the first place because your refraction on a globe is based on R. 7 over 6 of the radius in standard form terrestrial refraction. So to say the horizon's refracted, you're going to need R. And you're debunking your capability of acquiring it if you say the horizon's no longer in a geometric location. There's the full argument, black swan, top to bottom, including anti-flat earth responses.
I thank you. Right. She was wrong, even if correct. She was wrong, even if if she was basing it off of her heliocentric model, because there would be a roughly about eleven miles of curve at that height and at that distance. So she was wrong as in in a whole. Yeah, but that's the point of that argument. No, it's been structured like in such a manner that you will argue about whether or not the horizon in this example, which is assumed on both sides to be Earth curve, is or isn't bending. So during this argument where you say, well, you're wrong even based on your own heliocentric assumption because at that altitude you've got 11 miles of curvature, what is the curvature that you're saying you would have if their model was correct? It's the horizon. But the horizon isn't Earth curve. So don't lead with, well, you're wrong in terms of your own model and your own understanding of the model, even though you're correct. You're right, she's not falling in line with globe rhetoric. But all that means is she's an anti-flat earther then, yeah? But your horizon's still not earth, yeah, curve, anti-flat earther. Pretty much. Did we cover gas pressure without a container? I did mutter it through at some stage. Any evidence you can have gas pressure without the necessary antecedent of a container to press upon? No. Gravity. Gravity, gravity, gravity. I'm not listening. Gravity. Absolutely right, Neil. Profound. Columns, columns of air. Yeah, oh, yeah, columns column. of air. You don't have columns of air. And the gaseous pillars stood by. No pillars of air either. The gas particles run out of energy and and fall down. Not unless right. they, reach they up freeze zero. up and then they become heavy again and fall down. Heavy would be a downward vector ascribed with the heliocentric gravity. Gas doesn't go down, go boom, boom. It doesn't reach absolute zero and run out of energy. Well, if they would transit from gaseous state to a solid because it got so cold, then maybe they suddenly would go fall then down. Gas. Boom, boom. Then it's not a gas anymore. Well, then maybe when the gas goes up high enough, it just freezes up and then it prevents from escaping. It's well, like kind of a spur yeah, schema yeah. model. Yeah, yeah, like snow, yeah. To have that cycle in the first instance, you'd need to have gas pressure in order to have a gas pressure cycle to allow for those phase changes to occur within the gas that exists already. So you need containment to have this gas cycle that you're describing. Well, if it already happens with the hydrological cycle more down to earth, then maybe there is a freezing up of gas cycle higher up. Yeah, and you still need gas pressure to have containment in the first place to achieve this second time. <laughs> But what if the when frozen gas is just it, a cover? It's a dome of frozen, uh, well, what would normally be gas, but frozen up, like an ice barrier, preventing the rest of the gas from escaping. Oh, like a container that you've now speculated is an ice dome. Yeah, go on then, validate a, your ice dome. A we container need containment. of frozen gas. <laughs> yeah. Frozen gas. What the fuck? Yeah, I have to say it like that, of course. Frozen gas. Is, it, is that not um, a euphemism for a solid? As no, no, no. No, I often go into the supermarket. You got any of the frozen gas lollipops? <laughs> you don't have a few. Like CO2. Anyway, any evidence you can have gas pressure without a container? Well, maybe gas will form its own container because it freezes up into a solid. <laughs> Someone kick him out. <laughs> like a glitch in the matrix, then. Neil, well, glitch, if there's no Neil. more physical space for gas to move into, I guess that uh, volumetric limitation would also function as a containment. That is containment. That would volumetric is containment. limitation. Yeah, what? Like that would be a container, Arwin. Right, but it yeah, doesn't so, necessarily. So, uh, look at look at Arwin uses seventeen words you know. to describe something that is just a container, and then says that would be a container. So a volumetric limitation would be a container. Yeah. Well, 
a container kind of emphasizes it, it would be containment. It doesn't have to be a container because yes, that yes, we emphasizes agree. a material object. Yes. Oh Thank you. my god. Thank you for laboring this point so much. You want any more? Maybe well, you, well, you're laboring the the point that we need containment and just trying to reword it to sound smart, which is perfectly acceptable by me. <laughs> Right, but anyhow, when a less dense air pushes on the top, uh, on the bottom of another dense air, and they create their own pressure in the air. So by dense, you're ascribing weight to it, then saying that gas go down, go boom, boom. Dense yeah, gas when go it goes down. up, like helium will will press on the on the top of of hydrogen, and now they're they're self-containing in a level uh, plane of of air. Yeah, the, you've got to have something to press on at the top, though. Well, isn't it interesting, the idea that gas would eventually form solids at the limit range? It would almost be like Earth, ball Earth, of course. That'd and be... that limit would almost be like a cellular structure with an internal core, a more liquid, uh, fluid outside core, and then a membrane. But the liquid of a cell could still go through the membrane, technically, but it doesn't do that. So... This makes just things imagining even more confusing. a different concept, or no? He's using is twenty words. Or? He's using twenty words to say container. <sighs> Mike eight oh eight, you sent a message Ooh, and then retracted it from your super chat. Thank you very much for the super chat, though, Mike. Really appreciate the support. Well, Owen's more so speculating on the nature of the container, right? Trying to get Don't one call of it a container, guys. He's trying to get one of you to accept his straw man to move forward on. Very naughty boy. Yeah, no one's no. buying Owen. I want a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you've got some that's postulations. A, that's a crummy excuse. Yeah, very, very crummy. So you can feel free to Owen. If you want to speculate about something, just speculate. You don't have to weasel us into some trap that you're laying. Well, it seemed like I was weaseling you all into some trap. I was just kind of using the excuse to do that. It wasn't actually a trap because I cannot argue for gas pressure without a con without containment because containment is the antecedent to even be able to calculate gas pressure of any sort. So, like, there is literally no... Th there is no phenomena of gas pressure without containment of some kind. That doesn't exist. It's not even measurable. It's not there in any form. Would it be unreasonable, Tenth Man, to expand your... Um, I'm going to call it an in-joke, but you've been talking about waiting for a baller to come along with, with a certain thing happening, akin to Anthony Riley waiting for someone to come in and talk about Christian Hugens. Mm. Elaborate a little bit. <laughs> that was very high pitched. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's do a quick straw poll, guys in Discord. Do you vaguely re recall Tenth Man saying, "Oh, I've got some dynamite that I'm just sitting on, waiting for the right person to come along," in regards to the sextant? Do any of you recall yeah, that? I remember that. Yeah. Just you. Yeah, that's enough elaboration. Has he arrived, this person or she? No. I don't think so. Nah. Which person would that be? Morgyle contacted me this morning. Oh, cool. He said, oh, just send me the link. So I should have done that, really. <laughs> I'll do that right now. I've well remembered, now. <laughs> it is well remembered, eh? <laughs> but, you know... I'm hearing that you don't need the horizon. Say again? Uh, for the hex sextant. Say that again? Apparently, uh, you don't need the horizon to use the sextant. Where, who said that to you? A certain doctor. Oh, I, I'd like to know why they have a mirror on the sextant called the horizon mirror then. I'd like to know what that's used for and how many applications Yo, you, of you that. You don't need it. You don't need well, it. There's other ways of doing it. Well, okay, but every sextant has two mirrors, uh, index 
uh, arm has one. Uh, that's to bring the luminary down to the horizon mirror. Now, what? how many applications of the horizon mirror are there? So maybe that's what he's talking about. Well, that mirror is to calibrate on the apparent horizon, not the geometric horizon. So are you saying in the sextant manual, the handbook itself, it's got, it says apparent horizon? Well, no, it wouldn't have to incorporate all that because that's so technical, right? That would only make things more confusing. Oh, I see. So they just went with the natural horizon and the dip correction is your height above the sea level. Well, what's that for? Well, they have to calibrate it on the apparent horizon because you can only, yeah, it's a visual instrument. So you can only calibrate it to a horizon that you can see, you see. And, and why is it that they want you to use the horizon, especially out on sea on the rocking boat? What does the horizon serve? What purpose does it serve for the sextant? Level because flat. it presupposes R, just level like flat. terrestrial refraction? No, level, flat baseline. Thank you. But right it's anyway. R based though. It incorporates terrestrial refraction, but you don't okay. need to take that into account. Base of a triangle is flat and straight, right, Arwen? That depends on if you're using geodesics or not. We're not using geodesics, we're using a triangle. Okay. So the lines on a triangle, you'll agree, are all straight. I don't know what I was trying. I'm I'm out of it. <laughs> I don't know. Just, uh, all, my next, where I'm leading you is you said you need an R value. Well, in terms of a triangle, name one of the lines on a triangle that requires an R value. Well, the letter R does have two parts of a triangle. Radius value. For one of the straight lines on a triangle, Arwin. Well, the R, the letter R, also has half a circle. Interestingly enough. No, no, not the geometry of the lettering. We're not. We're oh. not having. This isn't calligraphy debate. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize that. <laughs> uh, okay, sure right. I know. let's just try that again. Are you clear? We're not talking about topography or typography, I should say. <laughs> typography, right? Well, we are supposed to be talking about topography, right? Sort of. If I'm taking a measurement off a boat, Arwen, and I use the horizon to create my level, and then I take my angle from that level I've created uh, to, to the luminary, when I draw that triangle, honestly, because I'm 10 foot above the water, when I draw it out, that baseline is not flat. And therefore, the angle from me to the GP uh, uh, of the start is not 90 degrees. So what the dip angle correction does is take your height above the water and adjust it so that it brings you down to the level of the water, making that angle now a 90 degree to allow the geometry to take place, the geometric calculation to take place from that point on. That's the purpose of the dip angle. Right. So it is like the perfect adaptation to terrestrial refraction, right? No. No, it's got nothing to do with refraction. What the hell are you doing? We're doing a perfectly good watching. summary. That was so concise from Adam. No, but it's, it's actually using the water as flat. It's still flat. I'm just trying yes. to well, do what Baldwin okay, does. Take a break, have a cookie, sip some tea. Oh, I'm actually uh, having a pizza right now. Well, wonderful. Uh, have a slice on me. The point directly overhead is the zenith. The angle between lines drawn to horizon and zenith is 90 degree or a right angle. This is from the navigation book by Hill Jacoby. The point that everyone needs to realize is when they first came on and their first rebuttal was, don't say 90. Eli reported that to us on the other channels. Don't say 90. Well, I'm sorry, but even in your own book, you need a zenith. 
And Zenith is directly above you, that plumb line. That's your GP. And the baseline is to the horizon. So you've got a zenith from your position and the baseline to the GP of the sun. And the sun's got a zenith position, a plumb line, and its own GP, a vertical, meeting the, the earth, the water at, at some point. And that baseline is leading to you, the observer, so that you can calculate and through the measurement through degrees and where you are in relationship to where the sun is at that point. It's all right angles. The whole navigation is based on right angles. The zenith of the star, the zenith of the observer, the angles in between. That all requires a baseline. And it all has to be flat. That's why Adam said eloquently, you, you minus how high you're above the ocean so that you can create this right angle, a right angle from you to the GP of the sun, a right angle from the sun to you as well. That's how you get the co-altitude. Well, uh, when right. Bob said, when Bob said that uh, you don't need the horizon, he was technically correct. You just need a horizontal, a straight, flat, horizontal, and your height above the sea level. What Bob said was in relationship to what the sextant is used when you can't see the natural horizon. They go to an artificial horizon, and the artificial horizon allows you to have the same readings. So the point is, there's times where it's foggy, it's, you just can't see the horizon. But if you're gonna use the natural horizon, you have to take dip correction. If you use an artificial horizon, there is no dip correction, but you're limited to half the angle of your instrument. So if you got a sextant that does 140, uh, then you can only measure up to 70 degrees. If it's 120, up to 60. So it's just another way of showing how it really is without using the natural horizon when it can't be uh, derived because of weather. Right. So see, you don't necessarily need the geometric horizon to use the sextant. You could just use the apparent horizon. No, you never no, use no, it. No, 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 no. I know I am. I'm just. I know. That's why I'm biting. Grill me already. <laughs> Take a break. It's nothing to do with a, a geometric you, you horizon. Can... The purpose of the horizon, if you're using it, i.e. you're not using an artificial horizon, is to establish a straight baseline. That's all you're doing with it. Nothing to do with the geometry of the horizon and everything to do with the geometry of a straight line. Technically, you can measure the angle between your zenith and the star, right? And then go from there. Yeah, you could do it with the plumb line, the more crude way. Tenth mentioned this a while back, is to just do it by dropping a plumb. But that's not necessarily the easiest thing to do, especially on a boat. The Sexton is a glorified protractor. They, you can tie a string to a protractor and put a weight on it. And you could turn that protractor, find the, I mean, you have to stay within the limits of what the tool can do, but the tool cannot measure on a curved surface. That's all you need to know to win the argument. The tool doesn't right. work on their globe. But yeah, that's what Bob, yeah, uh, when he, when, when Bob. Restoral fraction. Hold on, Owen. Thank you go, go, go ahead, John. When Bob come in and said that about not needing the horizon, right? He was admitting that he needed a straight line because he was using an artificial line to establish a horizontal, a flat line, straight line. But he just never acknowledged it and assumed a sphere anyway, is what I was saying. Well, I recall he didn't tell us from the beginning that he was using an artificial horizon. He wanted to say, oh, well, I, I, I don't need dip. I, I didn't. I don't need the horizon, referencing the natural true horizon, and I don't need dip correction. Well, that's when I caught what he was doing. I said, so what are you doing this on, basically? You know, well, I use the artificial horizon. Then <laughs> I chided him. I said, why did you say that from the beginning? Because your language doesn't match when you're actually using the real horizon. You do need dip. But when you go to the artificial horizon, 
your sextant is limited to half the angle because you're doing it in a different way, but you still have to point your horizon mirror on the sextant to the artificial horizon, which has to be flat. Can right. I make that's my what I just said. Yeah, yeah that's what great. I just said. He's, you... he's a great. Okay. Can I make my final rebuttal as Baldwin? Yeah, go right? ahead. So yeah, you're right. You need a straight line or you need an apparent straight line, right? It could in reality be a spherical curve you're looking at, but Sorry. terrestrial refraction will make it seem flat and <laughs> a seemingly flat straight line is all you really need. The new one on me, what the hell is apparent straight line? Apparently straight, so what? Appearing completely straight, but isn't. Yes, because of terrestrial refraction. Well then, by definition in your description, the then isn't bit just means it isn't straight and it must be well this sort of no, goes to where never bob be ended able to up see it me, like where that. he was saying well how far off would i be if i was on a ball how far off he, would he, i expect to be couldn't do on it. a ball it doesn't work like that it just can't be done as soon as you take a circle of equal altitude to each of the gps at the star it's not about being inaccurate Every principle that's being employed requires a straight baseline. So when they say, well, how much am I off by? Well, it could be off by such a fundamental amount that it's around the other, you know, 90 degrees around a sphere. When you're talking about tens of thousands of miles of area, when, you, when you're calculating your position with three stars, that is such a vast expanse of flat. But you're kind of asking a question that, that sort of whistle past the graveyard. To do this in the first place, you're measuring an angle. That's two straight lines. One pointing at the star. Now, if that's over a piece of ground that's 2,000 miles away from your position, you're making a triangle from your feet to the ground that is below the star. Well, to make a triangle, it's got straight lines. So when you're like, well, how much would we be off by? Off by? No, no. You just wouldn't be taking an angle measurement. You just wouldn't be doing this. Now, their response to that is, well, we don't. We, we have the sextant at the centre of the presupposed spherical Earth to do this, obviously, and the stars are infinite distance, and we just assume that when we're doing it on the surface, that's kind of the same as dropping it because of all the above reasons. You're like, um, well, when we do it, we just measure a straight line because we're just measuring a triangle. There's no presupposition required. In fact, you have to assume you're getting a straight line to the GP of the star because that is what you're actually doing. So it's game over. The moment they say, well, how much would be out by? You know, you wouldn't be getting an angle. You wouldn't be using this tool. It wouldn't work. It can't work. It doesn't measure angles from curves. The principle fails uh, immediately the moment they say they're on a sphere with a sextant. Yes, Correct. It's, it's a precise instrument and there's going to be error in in inherent to the instrument to begin with. This is why when you study it, and it won't take long, just do a few YouTube searches, uh, you have to make sure the index arm is at zero. The factory sends it to you with a certificate and it tells you how the factory set it. Now, it's not always perfect. It could be a, a minute off or whatever. And so when you do it, you have to uh, find out if you're gonna be plus or minus off on the index arm of error. And then it tells you in your final calculations, if you know you're plus two off, then you got to do this. If you know you're minus two off, you got to do this in order to get it back to zero because you're using a tool that's not quite calibrated to zero when you used it. That's number one. Number two, you have to turn the sextant sideways and adjust the two mirrors for perpendicularity. You've got to do that. Everything, and, they, and the plastic sextants have to be uh, checked often, like every time, whereas the metal sextants that won't bend or warp due to heat as much as the plastic ones, that's why they come in the box. It's great taking care of them, putting them in. They got two pegs that go inside the box so it can't be jarred in the ocean. Everything about this tool is, uh, in a sense, very, you know, you got to treat it with kid gloves and make sure all of those pre-things are done. And then when you do it, then you go to the book and follow the address book of the GP of all the stars that you're shooting. So that's how they can get it to within a half a mile to a mile because how important it is 
to dial this baby in at the beginning and get everything right. So uh, there's more to this than just picking up something and aiming. Indeed. But with that, I'm going to say first and foremost, a huge, massive, enormous thank you to both Discord and G Plus panels for making today's live show possible. If you are watching this on either Nathan Oakley 1980 or Nathan Oakley premiering streams, then stay tuned as there will be an after show to follow. Massive thank you to all of you who helped me out over the last few days by smashing the PayPal link. If you did want to support me via PayPal, now's the time as desperate measures are needed as I'm down on some pieces of equipment which are out for repair. So thanks to all of you who did support me via PayPal. And if you did want to, smash the PayPal link in the info box below this video. Once again, stay tuned if you're watching on either premiering stream. I've been Nathan Oakley and I will see you all in the next video. I'm sending you a couple more slides, Adam. Oh, cool. We're going to get on that this weekend. Yeah, yeah take your time. <sighs> yeah, I've got to keep beating this drum. It's going to take a while for people to understand how the sextant works. So we'll beat it because <laughs> we're using their material to beat them with. <laughs> it's their material that says it needs, a, it needs a flat baseline. It's their material that says it's a right angle. It's their material that says Zenith is directly overhead. It's their material that puts a 90 degree box under the GP of the observer as well as the GP of the sun. It's all their material. Wake up, ballers. You're being lied to. Okay, but still, I, I wonder, you know, besides the paradox of terrestrial refraction let's just overlook it since it's my paradox right how could it not work with terrestrial refraction could you Arwen, explain that you, to me Arwen, exactly. we're, we're, we're moving away from what you already tried to do in the live show now you want to bring it up again no he's asking yeah. how instead of terrestrial refraction if you're doing a dip correction all you're doing is bringing your height down so that you can be flat and straight in terms of pure geometry. That's all you're doing. You're just our, flattening yeah. out a curved line for the convenience geometry. of being able to do the mathematics. But that was answered in the live show. That's the purpose for the dip correction on the natural true horizon. But you're just... <laughs> presupposing yeah. there's no terrestrial refraction sorry <laughs> I had to do it <laughs> yeah we're not presupposing anything when you presuppose R based refraction is somehow something to do with making a correction that gives you a straight line it's like no your assumption of an R based refraction and an R based curved surface for the R based refraction to bend through the sphere shaped air has nothing to do with the actual geometry that's trying to be acquired when you correct for your height all you're doing is correcting that angle so that you are just dealing with a straight flat baseline that's why the correction's done sod all to do with r when the radius of the gp of the star or sun to the observer is say 3000 miles what does terrestrial refraction got to do with any of that the tool is a angle measuring device once calibrated prior to use properly, and then making sure that dip correction is done on the ocean to the true horizon, you have got yourself a right angle, a tri and then you can get that triangle. So it doesn't matter what the optics are because that sun's got a GP address and its angle, angular measurement is giving it to you and it needs a straight baseline from it to you 
it don't matter if Santa Claus is in the way. Yeah, exactly. But along that line, once you've made your dip correction, it doesn't matter if there's high-rise buildings in the way. It absolutely matters not what sits on the straight flat line that you're drawing. And when you use the horizon, all you're using it for is to establish that baseline. It isn't the baseline. It establishes the baseline. Therefore, beyond the horizon to potentially a couple of thousand miles away, you've got a straight line from you to the GP of the star. All straight, all flat. And the only corrections that are being made are to make it more flat, more geometrically true to the triangle with its straight, flat baseline. That's all you're doing. There's no corrections for R. There's no assumptions of geometric dip to horizon. You're utilising an optical property of it so you can draw a straight line. That's all you're doing. Well, that principle is and must be applied to a flat surface. Works because of it. Gets more accurate the closer to flat you get. Everything about it shouts... It is a flat earth. Yeah, that's why the section works. And like we were talking about in the pre-show, there are apologetics for it. Basically say, well, we'll make the assumption that it's flat and that we've got a straight baseline. A flat, straight baseline to the GP with 90 degrees, as described in every single description, baller or otherwise, when describing the sexton and its functionality. We'll accept all of those things. However, if I then, after the fact, move the angle that I've made on the flat surface with my flat presupposition and move that down to the centre of a presupposed spherical Earth, I can presuppose that this took place from the centre of a presupposed spherical Earth with infinite distances to the luminaries. There you go. Sphere faith retained. You're like, yeah, but you didn't do that. You actually did stand on the surface and take an angle measurement with a straight flat line along a straight flat baseline beyond the horizon that you utilised to get it. So you took this from a flat earth and then just after the fact made it into your faith that your model somehow applies to the world you're actually standing upon. Well, it doesn't. It's just your fundy way of justifying something that isn't real and couldn't be real or you wouldn't have got the measurements to make the presupposition after the fact. That needs... A flat earth. Yep. Anyone in Discord disagree? Yes, they're all in chat, though. They're chat skanks. I don't know if it was a fake Morgan in the... Um chat but when we mentioned getting him a link he appeared in the chat and did a little smiley face so i told him sent you the link but it might have just been a chat skank troll with the fake name nathan i got a picture of a level on the table that seems to be at the park can you post it up it's a master b All right, so here's a level showing that the board, that it seems several pieces of boards on this uh, picnic table, but you, you're going to get the idea here. So it's level right there. And you see to the right, the board ends. If you were to extend that board to 3,000 miles, it'd still be level. Profound. <laughs> well, this is basically what's happening with that baseline. They're on a part of the ocean, and the sun's GP is on another part of the ocean, 3,000 miles away. And the sexton could only work with a flat baseline between those two points. <laughs> Come on, what's not to get? But they're not getting it. Well, they're getting it, but they're in cog this. They have to deny it. But if they won't deny it when they're using a level to build a table. They're being woefully ignorant.
Thank you, Tenth. Yeah, I think people got bored of that. Boom, boom. Oh, it took me a second, that one. Very good. I mean, it's been over for a long time. They're no longer here. They can't handle the cog disc. I think that's why they can't come. They can't handle the cog disc anymore. It's too painful to come. Can't handle the truth. Well, it seems That's like we're getting a new wave. Go on, Roger, sorry. Seems like we're getting a new wave. Yeah, what do you mean? Uh, Nathan said I'm sorry. Did you yeah, want to talk, I, Nathan? Because I was speaking over you. Oh, okay. Well, it seems like we're getting a new wave of uh, ballers. Like, one said he's, he wants to come on Friday, and we had a couple come on Discord, and these guys... They're they're kind of new to it, but it seems like they're looking at the rhetoric that's out there already on YouTube, like Sam and Dan and Sly and all these guys. But yeah, it looks like the torch is getting passed. So there we go. Are, are you saying the torch is getting passed in what perspective? Meaning that they have studied their predecessors and said, hey, that's a silly argument. And then they study ours and said, well, we don't believe that because we're ballers. And then they're coming in with a new uh, perspective to it that we haven't heard yet or what? Well, they obviously got their perspective. And then when they come here, they're going to see the full perspective, right? Well, we'll see how it goes. The new wave of ballers are just part of the current crop of anti-flat earthers now. I, that's what I was I was trying to get to because if this is if this is the new wave is the offspring from the old, uh, then it's not gotten better. Arguments have gotten worse. Danny, do you think that Craig's a knob? We think what? Say again. Sorry. Sorry to cut you off, 10th man. I just want to make it funny. Denny, did you think that Craig's a knob? Could I point something out there uh, quickly? Yeah. Uh, David, we saw, was, he said, is that circumnavigation. You're roboting. Would. Work the same on our uh, signals all on the story. So, I'm not flatly time it can be your any time to come north or whatever or south would be if you it would either go northwest, south, pinnacle of a globe, right? Drop and rejoin. I couldn't make anything out. From what you said, you were roboting. Really? I, I did him perfectly. We don't speak robots. No, I, I agree. Yeah, we Next. didn't get any of that in. <laughs> <laughs> A week on Tuesday, uh, the original Nathan, I think you'll find. Yeah, definitely. And thanks. I mean, that, yeah, it would only, only ever point, point north or south office. if you stood directly south or directly north. It would never point in any other direction. It would only point at those directions then, yeah? We missed the beginning part, original Nathan, because you were roboting. Uh, apologies. Um, the a compass. If if I'm stood at the North Pole, and the south, if we were on a globe, the South Pole was directly beneath me. That's the only ever time it would point north or south. If I was stood on the equator to the west of the east coast, then I'm going to point uh, northwest, east, west, whatever. There's the only time we'd ever point north or south. If we were stood at the equator on a globe. No, I didn't hear a word of it. You were roboting terribly. Uh, apologies. I, I, I'm picking the kids up. I'll come back to you. Yeah, just drop and rejoin. I think he was alluding to whether or not a, a, a compass would actually align on a ball. Uh, in terms of its alignment with magnetic field. On a flat plane, we know what we're aligning with, but on a ball, you're twisting within that field, aren't you? Each distance has a different orientation 
to the field. Um, I think it's the point he's alluding to. You got that from that roboting. I'm amazed. Yeah. Courage. <laughs> it could well be wrong. Uh, Neil, you're roboting now. Absolutely correct, Neil. I don't know how we hadn't mentioned it before. <laughs> I said they didn't have good art. I said new waves of ballers. I don't think he meant ballers. When he said ballers, I, I kind of knew what he meant. When Ballers is anti-flat earthers, right? People who will defend the rebuttal against the globe claim and in many instances relinquish their own globe faith and claim in order to do so. Well, they used to be called ballers or globe heads. Well, I like the term anti-flat earther. That's what he's talking about. Because new influx of ballers, well... That's every time a new baby plops out of its mom's coochie, as far as I'm concerned, in the Western world at least. You know, it's interesting you said that. How come I keep getting an echo? Sorry. Anyways, it's interesting you said that because QE, I, and some others were in the after show. And this guy was hot miking this baller, this new guy. And he didn't know he was hot miking, and some of the stuff he was saying it sounded so, so bizarre. Almost people were writing in chat, "Wow, that's like an Agent Five. And another guy was like, "Oh yeah, definitely Agent Five. And I was like, "Whoa, I'm not saying that's what it was, but it almost makes me wonder if they're just being sent just to, just to be out there. I guess I'm not sure, but I don't know. That sounds pretty out there, even thinking like that. But that was interesting. Well, what did you hear that on the hot mic? Funny. Uh, how was it like it was basically like him talking about like sh creating a sock account should it create a sock account it sounded like he was trying to do that and trying to get back on it was like he was talking to somebody else he was so asking somebody he was asking somebody for their phone number or asking to send the verification to their phone or something like that or asking them to if they'll take over his screen so that he could, they'll he put in the verification yeah, He number. was online with somebody saying, you can take control of my computer. Yeah, it was pretty bizarre. Almost like it was like a mentor-tutor kind of relationship. But Well, that, that's anyways. what they do. That's what computer techs do. Uh, they have a program where you agree to, and then they remotely fix your computer problem. So why would he need someone well, to take over support. his computer? Well, he needed technical support, of course. He had needed a staff to look things up quickly. Because he... Or he could have been working on his computer while doing the show. That's a good point. That's right. Well, maybe he was talking about being kicked out of Discord, though, and that it happened before. Oh, blah, yeah, blah, blah. Right. He was trying to fix the problem that he was having not being able to connect, even though he was sitting right there. But anyways, to bring it back on point, I'm like, huh. You know, I never really thought about along those lines, right? Of like people being like that or like, you know, agents or shills or whatever our community likes to call them. I never thought that was a possibility. And even now I'm like, hmm. Yeah. But it was pretty weird. It was a pretty weird vibe yesterday. I was like, oh, wow, this is kind of bizarre. Yeah, well, I absolutely think this shills. To you that yeah, there are... Professional trolls. Absolutely. You can go look questions. it up. You can, yeah. You can actually you get yourself. Being yeah, a professional but, troll. Yes. You know, you, you were around when I was talking about how, you know, you need the information to come from your next door neighbor so it can be disseminated by whatever means and channels that they want to on Facebook. Well, with that in right. mind, if there's a certain story that needs to become prevalent, you've got to be able to nudge people in that direction coerce them in that direction you know well you've got to have a hidden hand at some point in that process so i think it goes without question there's going to be people who are in this scene that are trying to coerce the direction of certain subjects in certain directions i mean if you were you know we know we know the level of the deception so 
it, it seems almost unreasonable to assume that that wouldn't be the case. But yeah, that's just my opinion. Okay. It seems unreasonable to think there wouldn't be people put in place to coerce this conversation in certain directions. That's just my opinion, but that's just to summarise my opinion on the matter. I think there are paid shills. The chances of you being able to prove someone as such, zero. I've been here a long time, and there's been plenty of people calling people shills, and no one's ever shown any evidence to prove it's the case. So, you know, take that as you will. I'm glad you made that uh, disclaimer at the end. Right, it's, that, that's very good, Nathan. Right. Well, personally, I think there's actually people out there among the anti-flat earthers primarily, that are literally getting funding to really find a way to counter us and what we do. Like, they're, they're doing it professionally. They're really trying to dig up anything they can. Yeah, they're, they're, they're called cosmology, astronomy, and ast what, what do you mean? There's universities doing that. Right. The, well, they do it, and people dig among us to find flaws and weaknesses, to find anything that they think they can control us with on the long run. They're constantly probing us all. The fact, well, I think for their sakes, I kind of hope they are paid shills, because if they're not, what kind of sad, pathetic people are you that you invest your life into a painting, <laughs> whatever right. we believe. Yeah, yeah it does seem very alien. Too. You don't see uh, too many cooking shows with trolls, but there are many ways to cook a steak. You don't have a cooking show, Tenth Man. You have a food review show. Uh, hopefully the point won't get uh, lost. I mean, we've said it before, what you don't have are channels and shows dedicated to disproving ghosts or, yeah. Well, my point, my point was everyone has agreed it's a steak. <laughs> Now, you can cook it this way, you can prepare it this way, you can marinate it this long, you can do all those things, but no one is in disagreement that what you got in front of you is a steak and where it came from. It gets even more confusing when you look at the parallel, the only parallel I can think of for that matter, with the, the atheist debates. So you go, okay... You've got the Pope, and you've got the Queen, and you've got the Church of England, and you've got... Okay, we've got all that. But then you've got the heliocentric worldview disseminated by the Jesuit Church. Okay, that's a bit confusing. But when that information's put out into our realm, we have us debunking the Jesuit school-educated heliocentric model and the anti-flat earthers opposing us. Because in terms of the God rhetoric, you've got the powers over the powers that should not be telling you that they believe in God. Then you've got the mainstream rhetoric, which is below them but controlled by them, telling you there isn't, big bang. Then below that, you've got the anti-big um, uh, uh, bang people who say, no, there's a, a, a creator. And then you've got the anti-creationism <laughs> people who are in in opposition to them. So it goes from the top. They believe in God. They don't believe in God. They believe in God. They don't believe in God. You know, as you go down the chain with them debunking each other as you go up the chain in that regard. I mean, at least we've only got three steps. You know, the assertion you're on a sphere, us saying you're not. And then below us, people saying you're wrong about how we're not on a sphere. There's only three, whereas in um, the creationism debate, you've got a step above in the uh, control structure. That would be the main source of all the information. They're, they're you know, of 
at least portrayed belief in God. Below them, they've got the narrative they put out, which is no God. And then below them, you've got the people saying that the people who say there's no God below the people who say that, that, that there is are wrong. And then there's the people who say that the people who say there isn't a God because the people who say that there isn't and are in subservience to the people who are at the top who say that there is are also wrong. So you've got like five stages. Very confusing. Uh, it's an interesting point you bring up. I recall the scripture. Uh, I just looked it up. It's uh, Book of James, chapter two, verse nineteen. You believe that there is one God? Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. So, uh, believing in God is like, oh, there's a creation, there's a creator. That doesn't change your life. That doesn't make you seek Him for other things in your life, forgiveness of sins or other things. So just stating that a religious system, and there are many, that use God as the figurehead, uh, the normal people will say, well they're, well, they're religious and they must be Christian or they must be this or they must be that. No, no, it's a business. They're using the creator for a business and it's got to line up with the word of God or it's not. So here we got Jesus laying on the ground with hardly any clothes, and he doesn't have a garage, he doesn't have a Ferrari, he doesn't have any of those things uh, back in the day, whatever the equivalent was. And you got Joel Osteen, the false teacher here in the United States with big mansions and fancy cars. You got the Pope and all the cardinals with their regalia and their diamonds and gold and rubies and hats and staffs and buildings and treasures. False, all false. Well said. They're doing it for filthy lucre. I'm pretty sure if Jesus was here, he'd drive a Lamborghini, right? He'd, agree, he'd take a ride. He'd take a ride in one and talk to you, but he wouldn't be uh, owning one. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. He'd probably lease that bad boy. <laughs> no, yeah, that's a good one, Neil. He'd go for American Muscle. Right. Listen, guys. The word, what's a blessing? Anybody know what a blessing is? At uh, 8,000 RPM in a Lamborghini? Uh, more Super Chats? Yes, the both. I've seen yes, show both. Bambuka. <laughs> yes to both, believe it or not. People because remember, smash... if you look up blessings in the Word, it's physical stuff. Just go look at it. It's physical stuff. The Word is meant to bless you. He said, if you obey and serve me, you shall spend your lives in prosperity. That's not the context in which I brought it up. The context in which I brought it up is control for control of people. Yeah, hang on. There's nothing hang on wrong second, with hang owning on, things. Hang on. I think Righteous is saying there's free stuff on offer. Go ahead, Righteous. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, Righteous, I love your laugh, by the way. Yeah, Righteous is going to get swept up in that prosperity doctrine. I just read what God's word says. He always there's said, if you obey and serve me, you know, yeah, there's nothing wrong with having money. It's the love of money that's the problem. Even Nathan mentioned that earlier. Different. That's the problem. When you yeah. put money before there's God. The difference is the way they teach it, but right? You can... they teach, if you're not getting blessed and you're not walking right with God, it's the way they teach it. Look at how this conversation went apart from what I was trying to say. What I was trying to say is that People will use God in their business, in their religions, as a means of controlling you. It had nothing to do with God's word saying blessings and that uh, God will provide for you and that uh, money is good or bad, but the love of money is bad. It had no bearing on that context. It had to do with the subject at hand. And Righteous has now moved that transition, but he should have said, I want to transition to this perspective of owning things or not owning things but he didn't do that to be fair he's right he doesn't have any bearing on it let's not let this conversation go round and round well that's obvious oh, 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 oh very nice all you gotta do is look at the life of abraham yeah he was blessed not saying you shouldn't be blessed but when you're teaching that if you're not there's something wrong with you then that's a problem you miss nathan's subtle pun you just missed his other pun with the waves and the currents, so I don't care. Hey, I go with the tide, Neil. <laughs> Which you I know, thought was an excellent pun, Nathan. 
even Jesus was blessed. He rode the primo donkey that nobody else ever rode on. He also had yeah, the best clothing. That's why they right, cast lots over his clothing because hold on. That's why they cast lots over his role, clothing right? because he had let me finish, Neil. That's why they cast lots over his clothing because he had like seamless clothing. Like they were without seams. They were worth a lot of money. Oh, and yeah. they were also walking they also had like Judas carrying the money bag. At one point they almost had enough money to feed like thousands of people. The disciples were like, What, should we go buy food for all these people? So a lot of people well, misinterpret what God's word really says every now and then. Again, yeah, again, the you're, you're the taking way to lay his head. Again, righteous, you, you're proving yourself to go to scripture and quote verses that, in a particular context, I have no problem with. But you're not, what are you trying to do with those verses here? He was also born in a manger because there was no room at the inn, uh, uh, and he wasn't born in the king's palace, and yet he's the king of everything. So was he wait, humble? Wait, wait, that's oh, gold mining. Donkey. Remember, he got, he had, he had wise men bring him gold and money. Bring him well. I knew that was coming up, and I was going to say that. Right, just hold on one second. <laughs> Let me say one right. thing. Let me say one thing. When I was a babe in Christ, I almost got swept up in it because I'm reading something, and the guy's saying, "It's yeah. If you were in town, Jesus would have probably brought you lunch." And he had everything that you just said, seamless robe. They brought him frankincense, and his mother lived on that to raise him throughout his life. That is prosperity doctrine at the root. You better cut it. Well, to plug in my next video. Yeah, my next, that's, that's, my all, next... that's all daddy's money. And what that did they bring him? daddy's money that Jesus got it from. They brought him gold, <laughs> frankincense, and murchilago. It's Girl. definitely a Lambo <laughs> guy. <laughs> oh, good one. That, I have never heard that one. That was good. Oh, just you know, I'm, I'm, I'm back, and I, I think my signal should be good now. If I could just get my point across, if that's okay. Right, Thank right. You cannot pass. Let, let me, let me, run, let me round out to plug up my next video. My next video is going to be the blessings of obedience. So, tune in for that. You're not the boss that's of me. <laughs> that's on righteous right, so force channel. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're going to get to the the original Nathan is like. That's on Righteous Force channel, so check it out. Subscribe today. Be here or be sphere. Go ahead, the original Nathan. Lovely. So obviously, fresh eyes, fresh ideas, right? Um, I, I, obviously, I watch a lot of uh, David Weiss, and he says that the compass only ever works on a severe. Uh, it works both on a severe and on a flat plane, right? That's what he says. The same. But that's not necessarily true, is it? Because the only ever time a compass would point south or north is if you actually stood north or south. Because every other every other position on a globe, it would be pointing northeast, northwest, southeast, southwest. If you stood on the equator, it would never point south, would it? You asked this I last thought, time. I thought, the compass, I thought the compass only pointed north, and the backside of the arrow was always south. Just... I agree with you on that because yeah. there's only one there's only one north. Yes, I agree. Hold on. Let me just summarize this point. So I think the point trying to be made is that the assertion by David Weiss is that a compass would work on a spherical version of Earth and would also work on a flat Earth version of uh, the world. Whatever model is being used to depict that, I don't know. But regardless, your argument or the... Um, the original Nathan's argument is to say, no, it wouldn't work on a spherical surface. Correct? It would work on a spherical surface, but if I was stood at the equator, it would only point north. It would never point to south or north if I'm stood on the equator, ever. Why not? Because north would be either to, to the right of me or the left of me, no? No. North is like an, an absolute North direction. is in front of you. And north is north. But if you're on a flat surface, north is in the middle and south is on the outside. But on a sphere, on a sphere they could point in every single direction north, couldn't they? I don't know how to steel man this. I'm not a 
I can't put myself in the cognitive frame of mind of a fundy to, to argue this is a positive point, I'm afraid. That's why you're being met with so much style, silence. Where's Baldwin when you need him? He's off shopping, isn't he? Um, it, no, I'm not. Ah, it's good. A, I'll win. It's a, Take it. <laughs> what? Well, what, I'm, what I'm saying is if you're on a globe and they, they say that there's a North Pole and a South Pole, that's what they tell us, there's a North and there's a South, and that's how compasses work. The only ever time it would point south would be if I'm stood at the North Pole. That'd be the only ever time it could be possible. The only ever time it would point north is if I'm stood at the South Pole. Otherwise, it could never ever point in the opposite direction to where it's supposed to be pointing. I don't know about that. I think that the compass is just like, they just reverse. So if you go south of the equator, then literally the south part, the opposite of the north pointing part of the compass, will simply start to point south because it's an opposite magnetism there. Well, would, the wouldn't it point pole. northeast or northwest? No, it wouldn't. No, no. This, the other side of the compass points south at that point because the other it. magnetism, the other side of it, the other pole is stronger than any kind of North Pole pole pool, right? At the has south. someone done, has someone done this around the globe? Because because otherwise it doesn't work. What around the globe? What the hell does that have to do with it? Well, because obviously, if I'm if I'm if I'm if I'm stood at the equator, and the North Pole, if I'm stood in Spain, and the North Pole is above me and the South Pole is below me, the only way I can get to the North Pole is if I I I, I face North east or northwest. The only possible way, if the North Pole is a magnet, is a magnet that I'm appointed to. The only way to ever point north or south is if I'm sort of opposite it. What? No. A compass points north and it points south. Whatever it is closest to, that part points towards it. You understand? It's a straight line, though, Arwen. No. What? No, no. North, so, north, north is a straight line, right? No, because if you're talking in, in ball world, then it's arcing fields around each hemisphere. And all you're doing is lining up within the field lines. Same on a flat earth, you're still lining up within the field lines. It's not pointing, right, to north, is it? It's aligning itself within the magnetic field that it's... That it's exposed to that's where the alignment comes yeah it's following the same direction as those but that's no, what i'm saying that, that are, they, line, are they trying to say that, that, that they aren't is that what north. they see that line is an arcing magnetic line so you're just so they, that, that's what i'm trying to say they, they see is an arcing line is that what they see that's that's what a magnetic field is yeah for both but for both models thank you very much that's explained it oh good Thank Jesus. Allah be praised. I'll thank Jesus. Yeah, I, I don't understand what he's saying still. Uh, what, what I'm trying to say, Tenth, is if I have a... When you get two magnets, if I'm sat in my living room and I have two magnets and I put the attractive end to the negative end, they push away, right? Mm -hmm. And if I put them both facing each other, they attract each other. That, and that means mm -hmm. that's science test. But if I put one on the, it, it doesn't it doesn't work like that on a globe, does it? It it doesn't. What globe? No, I agree. There's no globe. I, I agree. There's no globe. But that's why I'm saying magnets don't work that way. Well, well, magnets. magnets if, you're, if you're trying to say like, yeah, the compass should be pointing down most of the time. Yeah, it should. It shouldn't just be horizontal as you use it, right? Because the pole is through the Earth at some point, like at the axis, north but or again, the south part. But again, it's just following the field lines. So, the field lines are curved. Yeah, it lines okay. up with the field lines. It doesn't, doesn't have the capability of actually knowing where the north is. Yeah, that's right. Matt, Matt, Okay, but that's what but, Adam but, was saying. Uh, okay, fine. So, what's the point? 
The point is, let me finish. So when these people on the yacht races and navigators shows about sailing shows that I watched that are in the below the so-called equator line and they're sailing there and when they're above sailing there when they're want to head back to home and home is say uh, England and they happen to be in Australia what's the compass pointing to it should still be north yeah yeah <laughs> Cardinal directions. I mean, they're down there, supposedly on this globe, which doesn't exist, and they they got to go north. And if the compass doesn't point north, how are they going to go north? By going the opposite of south. That's north. Oh, and God. eventually, you will get closer to the north than you are to the south. Yeah, but the, the arrow will revert the other way. But the arrow doesn't point south when they go north. The arrow's pointing north, and the back end of the arrow on the compass is pointing south. That is what I'm saying. No, you weren't. No, that is what I meant, though. And that's yeah. what I said before, and so Everyone that's why is, I repeated it. Everyone else is head hurting a little bit. Yeah, you got a compass, right? The compass has an arrow. The arrow points north. The front Always. Of the, can I finish? The front, no, you of, the, let me the finish. front of the arrow points north. The that's back of said. the arrow points south. If you're closer to south, then the back part of the arrow will be your guide. If you're closer to the north, <laughs> then the front part of the arrow will be your guide. Nice way to repeat um, Thank you. But, but oh, if, if you're on a globe and you stood and you stood at the equator and you've got your compass and you want to go north. So the earth supposedly is 24 and whatever uh, uh, circumference. If I want to go north, shouldn't that compass point me into the ground? What the Did anyone that was hear my what original point? You already anyone? said why that wouldn't work. Did anyone hear what Adam said about the field lines? That, I mean, that settled it. Yeah, it did. Right. That was five minutes ago. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Are any of you familiar with the work of a philosopher by the name of Fierabant? Fierabant? Uh At one time, but he got banned, so no one could hear him now. Go on. Why'd you ask? No. We're not allowed to. Go oh, ahead. We're not allowed to talk. Is it against the rules to talk about him here? Yes, his name Depends shall never be is, mentioned. Yes. No, of course it's not. Go ahead, um, David. Is that right? Yeah, go ahead. Yep, that's that's a good enough pseudonym for me, David. Yeah, whatever. Um, it's um because I feel because there's a lot of philosophical movements which are against science. You know, well, get or well, Fierabend especially. He even has a book titled "Against Method." So, I think um. Ultimately, a lot of these things have a kind of philosophical source, you know, and um, I think in terms of a lot of this kind of weird science stuff we see today, what people kind of describe as pseudoscience, um, I wonder if philosophically it's, this, it's coming from this Fieraban person or, you know, academics like him. Was he, did you say against the method itself? as in against the scientific method, or is he against the pseudoscience claiming to be adhering to the method? Which one's he against? No, no, he has a book, uh, a philosophical work titled Against Method, where he argues right. that, um, well, I've only read the blurb, I still haven't read the book, so I probably shouldn't say anything about it. I just know that the the blurb and the title are against method, and basically argue that the scientific method isn't a way of getting to truth. And then um, he kind of builds from there what science should be from that fact. Right. So a liberalist, he's a science liberalist, thinks science can be anything. Oh, we need more freedom 
to assume things to be science. Adam, Adam is share screening. Sounds like he's arguing against the pseudoscience aspect of it, i.e. the hijacking from what I've read so far, Adam. Adam, I... But why would that be anti-method? Because method is exactly what science is, and the stepping away from the method is what created the problem, not the scientific method. Stepping away from the method is the problem. So is he arguing against having a method? Seems so. <clears throat> Excuse me. So from the first paragraph, it seems like he's pulling apart the methodology and it's specifically saying that methodology is the scientific method and he's calling it absurd. Right, so he's a liberalist. He's just like, nope, science can be whatever you like. And here's the reason, because they all did it wrong and we disagree, so let's throw it all out of the window and start oh, no, completely no. new but without oh, rules. Sorry, out with Sorry, just go back to that last paragraph you were on at the end of the last one. So, no, it then contrasts it, um, where he's basically saying, where is it? In the last paragraph. Galileo. No, no, no. There, well, there you go. Breyerband also argues that if Galileo had adhered to the conditions of the methodological monism, then he could not have achieved a heliocentric cosmology. This implies that scientific progress would have been impaired by the methodological monism. Again, yep. an absurdity for proponents of the scientific method. So that makes me question when they say scientific method, if he's, if he's pulling apart any sort of methodology when it comes to Galileo Galilei, then he's not talking about the scientific method, is he? Exactly. He is a liberalist. You just confirmed it. So he says, how dare you restrict yourself to the method, the QE method, for example. It shouldn't be restricted or heliocentrism wouldn't have gotten as far as it is because I'm religious selling about it. That's I read what it, it is. That what he's saying is if Galileo had a, kept um, adhered to the conditions, then he wouldn't have been able to make up heliocentric cosmology, yeah? He wouldn't have been able to if he'd have stuck to the rules. And therefore, you shouldn't stick to the rules because it stops you from making stuff up. Oh, I see. Yeah, I've, exactly. I've misinterpreted it. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought first. <laughs> okay. So he's saying he's essentially against the rigid um, boundaries that the method sets down because if it was for an adherence to the method then you wouldn't have some of the wonderful things like heliocentrism is that what you're saying it's actually spinning out to be yeah, well, it's the dusty old yeah, empirical it, method that just holds us back right if you did adhere to the conditions of the methodology yeah then he could not have advanced his heliocentric cosmology I, so he couldn't have proposed these things if all he was using was the science. He has to put something else in to then use this data from his methodology to build his heliocentric model is what that reads to me. He's, re he's that's what he's saying to me. He's, to me, viewing it from a dev very different perspective. He's kind of saying, look, you'll never progress if you don't make stuff up and then put that stuff in there because you wouldn't have been able to have balls orbiting something from the data they get. It's not valid. You couldn't have drawn that conclusion. So you have to yep. go into fantasy to to get it. In the phrase with uh, Faye and Brend summarizes reductios with the phrase "anything goes." Right. Sounds it, very religious to me. No, no. no, no. Like, what, yeah, he's, what, he's, what he's what he actually is is a pseudoscience apologist. That's what he is. Hmm. But then or he would argue that science, about, um, religious fanatic. science itself is pointless. That's what they would argue. Because um, yeah, that's what he is arguing. Again, I'm still reading philosophy, so I'm still not quite don't know everything. But they say, well, if there is no truth anywhere and it can't be accessed, and so on and so on, because of you know philosophical arguments, which I quite don't understand at this moment. 
then the method should reflect, you know, science should reflect the fact that there is a truth. And it, um, and so this, the, I, I, I don't know, because I haven't read him, and I don't want to misquote something without having read it yet, but I'm assuming that he's saying that uh, since there is no truth, it's all relative and so on, that the method, scientific method, should be kind of discarded and it should be, you know, wherever we want it to be. Yeah, right. that's exactly we what should be saying. able to yes. make shit up. Yeah, that's exactly that's what we're saying. Good summary. There was a time when theology and the sciences were together. They decided, okay, we're not going to do that. We want to just go to science, so we're going to be logical and have method. And that's how they made the change. Okay, we're not going to accept the Bible. We're not going to go by faith. We're not going to go by belief and then tie in science together. We're going to separate the two. And then now they abandon the method so they can come on with their pseudoscience. So the method, if they stuck to it, wouldn't give them heliocentrism. It would have matched what the Bible has said <laughs> So about cosmology. But they need heliocentrism. But the first toe into the water was, we're going to be scientific. We're going to be logical. We're going to prove everything. We're going to have a cause and effect. We're going to do it all the right way. And no one could argue it because this is stronger than believing in some ancient scriptures. And then they say, well, you know what? We're going to have to vary off this method and be pseudoscientists to push our heliocentric model. Yeah, you don't want that dusty old scientific method getting in the way of us making up stuff. But with that, I'm going to say another huge, massive, enormous thank you to both Discord and G Plus panels for making today's after show possible. And of course, a massive thank you to all of you in either Nathan Oakley 1980 or Nathan Oakley premiering streams. Hopefully smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, hitting the PayPal link and all that good stuff. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I will see you all in the next video.